Hey everybody, it's Jeff. Welcome to another episode of Stay Rad Wine Blog TV. Today, I'm going to be grooving on this sample. I, I actually got three samples from these guys at my doorstep um, just a couple of days ago, and I'm excited to jump into this one right here. Uh, I got these samples from Castello di Omarosa. Um, if you've ever been a tourist in the Napa Valley, um, there are two places that a lot of folks end up stopping at. One of them is called Visa Tui, which is, um, you know, if you're driving north through that valley, it's about halfway up. Um, and a lot of folks end up stopping there for the wine and also for lunch. Well, the folks who own Visa Tui also own, and, and this is a place that a lot of folks probably know about already, they own this huge Italian castle just a little bit further north. I want to say like just before you get into Calistoga, um, you'll see it on the left as you're driving uh, north up that main highway. Um, so the folks at Visa Tui, they built uh, Castella di Amorosa. I want to say it's about 10 years uh, since they've been open. Um, and I've been there a few times. You might have seen like some folks on The Bachelor go on a date uh, to this castle. It really is kind of like a destination, like a place to go. That's exactly what the castle looks like. So it's neat to kind of see something like that uh, in California. They sent me three Chardonnays. Um, two of them, they're all 2013s. Two of them are from the Bien Nacido Vineyard uh, in uh, Santa Maria in the uh, uh, Santa Barbara County uh, way down south from here um, and I'm going to try those on another day because I'm really excited about those. Uh, this one today is their Napa Valley uh, 2013 Chardonnay. This is 100% Chardonnay coming from their estate vineyard in Los Carneros. For those who don't know, I mean, Napa in general is a pretty warm climate, um, but the Carno Carneros region, which is the furthest south you can go there, which actually straddles both Napa and Sonoma, these guys are getting really cool breezes off of the San Pablo Bay, uh, the north end of the uh, San Francisco Bay. Um, and so that cool climate really kind of lends itself to your Chardonnays and your Pinot Noirs and, and your Syrahs. I mean, cool climate Syrah is kind of awesome. Um, but let's look at this Chardonnay right here. Um, so really just nice, pretty, bright gold color. Um, this Chardonnay was uh, aged in oak, I want to say for 10 months. 100% um, barrel fermented, uh, surly the entire time. So it was sitting on that yeast uh, and that sediment and being stirred around for 10 months. 50% of it um, is new oak, 50% uh, neutral oak, all French oak. And, uh, you know, uh, let's see here. Yeah, and it looks like 40% of it uh, underwent malolactic fermentation also. So uh, I'm looking for... I'm looking for like a toastier effort here with a little bit more uh, body, a little bit more rich in terms of Chardonnay. Let's uh, check the nose and see if I'm right here. And I got to tell you, although that oak is present, you know, up front more than anything else, I'm getting some of that green apple, which I really do love on a Chardonnay. So if you're only doing 40% malolactic fermentation to have, you know, that other 60% that's holding on to that malic acid, which is that more of a tart green apple uh, type acid, you are going to get some nice like tropical notes there. I'm definitely getting that like apple, um, papaya. And just like this really honestly on the nose, like it's really more of a like a subtle toasty oak integration, like not overwhelming, not overpowering at all. A little like lemon lime there as well. Let's check the palette. Wow. So you got two things happening at once. You've got 
this extremely creamy, rich mouthfeel. I mean, it's almost like the word that's coming to my mind is is frothy. Um, like there's almost this impression of like, um, you know, if you had a mouthful of whipped cream, um, not the creamy part of it, but if you just think about how that feels in your mouth and even like after you swallow it, how it kind of coats your mouth, there's this, there's this frothiness there. It's like, you know, back in the day there was this product, uh, it might still exist, but I haven't. I haven't had Jello in like 15 years, but there used to be this stuff called Jello One Two Three. It was like this Jello parfait that would kind of settle itself out, and there's always like this creamy top layer to it. Like that's the mouthfeel that I'm getting at. And by the way, there's nothing in my mouth right now. I already swallowed that wine, but it's leaving like this really kind of interesting, cool, kind of creamy impression on the mouth. Now, while all that creaminess and that richness is happening, there is some rip-roaring, vibrant acidity to just cut right through that richness and just kind of liven everything up and, and excite you about this, you know? I think the problem with a lot of Chardonnays, and I think, you know, the reason why Chardonnay probably got a bad rap for a while and, and the reason why, you know, people were coming back with like stainless steel Chardonnays was because those overly oaked Chardonnays with no balance at all, you know, while while there is a place for those, um, it's it's nice to kind of drink those as a cocktail every once in a while. They don't really go that well with food, but when you're talking about something like this, with that vibrant acidity and with that creamy mouthfeel, um, this is something that I could definitely see pairing with like, like I'm thinking about like shellfish. I'm thinking about oh, like some lobster with some butter right now would be legit. Um, uh, I'm also honestly thinking about like a nice chicken dish. I'm actually thinking about the chicken I ate earlier and I was telling Kara like, we can't drink the wine with the food because uh, I got to clean up first and I got to review this thing before we try it. And I kind of wish that I kind of did this video first and then I could pair it with my dinner instead of the other way around. But I think this would go great with like some pan seared uh, chicken breast. Um, man, I haven't even got to the fruit profile on the, on the uh, palate here, but this is, oh, this is nice. Yeah, there's more of that green apple. Um, there's there's kind of like a, a pineapple mango type of tropical feel. There's also like um, some like fig, like some roasted fig type of thing happening. Like this is um, really hitting on all levels for me right now. Um, this wine is rolling in at... $29 a bottle. Um, I'm pretty sure that um, they've got a pretty good like online presence like their store it's pretty easy you know as long as it's a as long as it's a state that uh, wine can be shipped to um, you know you you shouldn't have any problem picking this up uh, through their website um, but but this is something where I'm saying yeah definitely go for this um, this might be wow yeah this could possibly be, and I'd have to go through and, and check my reviews from earlier this year. I think this might be my highest rated wine of 2015 so far. So far! Um, and I'm giving it a 93. Like, guys, you did a great job here. And, and wow, thanks for sending this sample out my way. I'm, I'm uh, looking forward to those other two bottles too. But, um, wow. Wow. This is legit. Yeah, so the uh, 2013 Castello uh, di Amorosa Napa Valley Chardonnay. Not too shabby. When's the last time you had a Chardonnay that was not too shabby? Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Till next time, everybody, stay rad.
Stay mad. 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 Stay m